Go to Exodus, if you would, the, uh, the 14th chapter. Now, Phyllis was laughing about tonight's message title because <laughs> the title is Quit Crying and Move. <laughs> so you uh, you ready for that? Yes, sir. <laughs> if it's in the Word, I said if it's in the Word, then we, we're ready for it. I'm excited about the Word this week. There are answers here. I can sense it in my spirit. Uh, in uh, years back when I was a student at Ramah, one of our instructors, Brother Mel Piper, was teaching us some Old Testament things. And we were talking about some of the judgment things and some passages that people struggle with sometimes. And he just stopped and he said, uh, he said, uh, no matter what you understand or don't understand, always stay on God's side. That is some of the best advice I've ever heard. What do you think? Say it out loud, always, always stay, stay on God's side. On God's side. What does that mean? Never take sides against him. Yes, Questioning him, doubting him. And somebody says, well, why, why'd God do that? You go, I don't know, but he must have had a good reason. Yes. I'm with him. Why didn't he do this or didn't know? I don't know, but he's right. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. I said he's right. he's right. About everything he did, everything he didn't do, he's right. He's right. And he's good. Yeah. Whether you see it or whether you don't, yeah. I'm staying with him. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm with him. Yeah. And that'll get you through some challenging spots. And you'll find out in time to come, when your understanding increases, you'll go, oh, no wonder. You'll see he was more gracious than you would have asked him to be. He was so faithful, there's just a lot you didn't see, a lot you didn't understand. But that's, that's what tries your faith some of the most strenuously, is when you don't understand. You don't have to understand to believe. Yes. Believing, faith, trust is a choice. It's a choice. And you honor God the most when you understand the least. And yet you trust him anyway. It honors him. In the uh, Exodus, the 14th chapter, this is the beginning days of God delivering his people out of Egyptian bondage, out of slavery. You know the story that not long after they, uh, they left, Pharaoh decided to follow them. And they got closed in between Pharaoh and his forces coming behind them and uh, the Red Sea in front of them. And they're in this proverbial between a rock and a hard place. And everything in the Word of God is, uh, it's history, it happened but it's all the things that were selected and kept for the word apply to every generation. And uh, <clears throat> one thing I won't take time to go into it, but a life changing revelation with me yes, just a couple of years ago yes, is 
that there is no old word of God. The word Old Testament referring to the, uh, the previous books of the Bible, not in the New Testament, is not old and no longer applicable or no longer true. Our covenant has changed. But everything God ever said is right and true. And so do, do not treat what people call the Old Testament slightly or like, well, that does, well, yeah, but that's Old Testament. Well, it's true is what it is. And it says, well, you know, we don't have to keep the law, but the law is no less true. We don't keep it to be righteous or saved, but thou shalt not kill. Still right. Is that right? No other God before me? Always right. Huh? None of that. There is no such thing as an old word of God. Every heaven and earth will pass away, but not his word. And uh, somebody says, yeah, but what about the, uh, uh, you know, people being stoned for sinning? Well, uh, the reason we don't do that is because Jesus took our place. He was crucified in our place, right? And the reason we don't continue to offer the blood of bulls and goats is because he shed his blood. Hmm? But everything that God said is true. And right and good. And so when they're in this situation, uh, you see them dealing with fear, with terror, and then responding to what God said. And faith works exactly the same today. Fear works exactly the same today. None of that has changed. None of it's going to change. And... uh, Verse 10, chapter 14, Exodus 14, 10. When Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And you, you got to put yourself in their place. Yeah, sir. It was a scary, scary situation. These uh, <clears throat> Pharaoh and every household there had just suffered the loss of the firstborn. You talk about grieved. You talk about wanting revenge, wanting to hurt somebody, wanting to kill somebody. They came to wipe them out. And they know it. And they're basically unarmed. And here comes one of the premier uh, war fighting machines in the world down on them and, and they got nowhere to run they cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses because there were no graves in Egypt have you taken us away to die in the wilderness why have you dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt now not long ago they were celebrating. <laughs> right? Because right. they're free. Right. And they got money in their pockets and they're healed and on their way to the promised land. But when they saw the dust cloud kicked up by Pharaoh's army, they lost the victory. <laughs> and fear overwhelmed them. Don't underestimate fear. Fear is a real enemy every day of your life. And if you don't resist it, it'll it'll paralyze you. It'll lock you up. It'll rob you of God's plan for your life. In order to follow God, you have to have faith. In order to have faith, you have to overcome fear. Every one of us. 
No exceptions. You have to overcome fear because as surely as the Lord tells you to do something, the enemy is going to bring his harassing spirits to tell you what? That you can't. Hmm? There's no way. You don't know. You don't have. You can't do. You don't have the connections. Whatever. And it won't just be the thoughts. He brings feelings. Real spiritual influence. That's what surprises a lot of people. They think, well, if it's spiritual, it must be God. Oh, no, honey child. (laughs) The enemy is real. And these feelings are real. And we've got all kind of church-going people, Christians, suffering major depression. And it ought not be. I said it ought not be. It's children of God not realizing who they are and what they have and not realizing where these thoughts come from and where these feelings come from and that you can absolutely shut them down in the mighty name of Jesus and by the greater one on the inside of you. But if you are passive and you don't rise up and resist it, it'll overwhelm you. And the feelings are real and terrible. And people get suicidal just for thinking on the wrong things, yielding to the wrong feelings. I want you to say it out loud. My mind mind is my mind. mind. I don't have to think think things I choose not to. I don't have to yield to feelings that are not right. I have authority in the name of Jesus. You know what the scripture says? The weapons of our warfare, they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Is that right? And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought. A thought's bothering you, you grab it by the throat. You say, no, you don't. No, no, not in my life you don't. Slam it. Cast it. Throw it down. A thought you won't think cannot bother you. Huh? A feeling you won't yield to cannot bring you down. But you can't be passive. You got to got to make a, a move, which is what we're about to talk about. Hmm? Anybody remember the title? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, they said, verse 12, isn't this the word we told you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in the wilderness. Every time you're at a, 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 a place of breakthrough to come through to a miracle and what God wants you to have and do, you'll have to deal with this. The thoughts, the feelings. That's the only way the enemy can stop it. He can't stop God. But if he can get you to put fear in your mouth and get you to quit and give up, then in effect, he can stop what God wanted to happen in your life. And they're yielding to the wrong thing. Don't realize it. But Moses said... Fear not, stand still, and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. He's prophesying. 
He's declaring something that hadn't happened yet. But he knows God didn't bring them out there to kill them all. He didn't go through all that to get you here to perish. No, no, no. So all of this comes back to who God is and knowing his character. Hmm? They kept saying, God brought us out here to kill us. Well, you don't know him then. You talk like that, you don't know him. He said, the Egyptians you've seen today, take a good look. You won't see them ever again. Where are they going? (laughs) The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. How do we know? How do we know the Lord will fight for us? See, they're, they're on the previous side. It's easy for us to hear on the other side of this thing, look so confident and go, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, but we know, we know the end of the story. <laughs> the Lord will fight for you. You'll hold your peace. And so then the Lord said to Moses, You see where I got my time? (laughs) The Lord said, what? Why? Why do you keep crying to me? (laughs) Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Now, what would you think they might think when they heard that? (laughs) Go forward forward. Where? (laughs) Right? Where? (laughs) But does God know what he's talking about? And you'll see, just like this, many times the Lord will say, move, and you'll go. (laughs) What move? I don't see a move. Yeah, but he does. Yes, he does. I said he does. He does. He does. Yeah. And if he says move, move. move. That's it. That's it. Right. He said, uh, why, why are you crying to me? Tell them that they go forward. And then he said, lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea, divide it, and they'll go over on dry ground. Let me read this to you from some other translations. The contemporary English version says, why do you keep calling out to me for help? See, the Lord warned us about vain repetitions. And the enemy will get you into a loop. Oh, God, help. 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 He heard you the first time. (laughs) So what's all this stuff? Oh, God, oh, God, they're getting closer. Oh, help. Oh, help. Oh, help. Looping. Looping. And if you do that enough, it'll come out of your mouth. Yeah. Then you'll say it again and you'll say it again and the enemy's got you where he wants you. The New Living Translation says, The Lord said, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. (laughs) Tell them to get moving. God's Word Translation says, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the uh, Israelites to start moving. The International Standard says, Tell them to move out. Move it. Move it. Where? Where are we going, God? Move it. Move it. You know, uh, Brother Oral Roberts, who's in heaven now, uh, did things no evangelist has ever done in the earth. Built a university. Built a hospital. 
He said, if God tells you to build something, dig a hole. <laughs> what is that? Now, we, we laugh. We think that's a simple thing. It ain't a simple thing. No, no. Why? Because what does your mind want to do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how, how are we going to finance this? And where are we going to get that? He didn't say ask a thousand questions. He said move. Move. You can't steer a parked car. Right? But if it's moving, you can guide it. You can direct it. Quit crying to me and move. How many think that's a word? That's a word. Yes. Quit crying out to me. See, it's easy to be lazy and just cry and whine and plead and beg. But that's not faith. And it doesn't work. And it doesn't get a miracle. Why would God tell them that? Did he need them to move for him to do what he was going to do? How do you know? That's the way he did it. Are y'all with me? People say, well, God, God don't need me. Said who? See, we, we live in a, a generation now that has adopted grace only. That being, everything is up to God. And God is in control. You hear people saying this, people in our camp that should know better. Well, God is in control. God is in control of what? Of you? Well, he's in control of everything. Says who? These are doctrines that are not from God. These are teachings that are contrary to the Bible. He has chosen to involve us in our deliverance, in our healing. Whether you think that's the way to go is irrelative. He has chosen to do it this way, right? And if you don't do it the way he said to do it, it, it doesn't happen. Well, God, what you need us to move for? Can't you split the Red Sea? And we'll wait till you get done. And then it'll be, you know, a lot more comfortable. <laughs> Give it time to dry out some more. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how he wants to do it. That's not how he does things. Religion makes beggars out of men and women. Teaches men and women to beg and cry and plead and beg incessantly. I am sure God gets tired of hearing it. But if you notice the scriptures, he says things like, quit crying and move. Huh? Amen. <laughs> Go to John, the second chapter. <clears throat> John, chapter two. There are answers here, brother, sister. There are answers. I've heard people say, well, you wonder why? We, you know, we don't see as many miracles or as many as this. You know, uh, well, it's just a different. Day and, no, God never changes. God never changes. People change. And the enemy is always trying to steal from the church, from the body, the knowledge and understanding of how things work. And every generation is just that far from losing what the previous generations got from God. 
in John, the second chapter, the beginning of Jesus' miracle ministry, the turning of the water into wine. You remember that? John 2, and what is verse 3? Let's look at that. John 2 and 3. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to them, uh, uh, they don't have any wine. They ran out. Jesus said to her, woman, it's a respectful term, what have I to do with you? Uh, Another translation says, what is that to us? What is that to us? You know, it's, it's real pride to think you can fix every situation because you're a believer, because you're a minister. Hmm? Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. Is that true or not? Well, it's certainly true of us. There's a whole lot of things, nothing to you. Huh? And if the Lord doesn't say anything to you about it, you can't do anything about it. Hmm? Do not act like you can just come in and straighten everything out everywhere you go. You can't. You're not the Savior. Now, when he tells you to do something, you can. He said, what, what's that to us? My hour has not yet come. And so his mother turns to the servants. <laughs> and boy, it's, a, it's not even a long sentence. But it is the key to miracles. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Whatever he says to you, pray about it. (laughs) Huh? No, no, sir. Huh? Do it. I don't know at the times. The Lord has given Phyllis and I counsel and direction for folks and we've told them and they said I'm going to pray about that (laughs) well the direction wasn't to pray it was to do something something. but they're going to what pray Pray about it which is kind of the same thing no No. No. whatever he says to you meditate on it it. huh Ponder it. No, no, sir. And think about it. No, sir. Get a better understanding of it. No. No. Do it. Do it. Do it. That's how you miss a miracle. That's good. That's right. We're going to see this uh, a little bit later, but you know that James, second chapter, about being a doer of the word, faith and action. We're going to be talking about that. But the warning in chapter one is that if you don't do, you forget what you were told to do and you become self-deceived. That's how you miss a miracle. Because, and the enemy knows this better than most humans. The enemy, when he, when he hears the Spirit of God tell somebody to do something, red lights go off in hell. This is dangerous, dangerous situation because if somebody will act on the instructions of the Lord in faith, anointing will be released. Yes. Yeah. Anointing is manifested. Uh-huh. Yokes are broken yeah. and destroyed and burdens are removed. Yeah. Things it took the enemy decades to affect yeah. will be shattered in a moment. So the enemy knows, uh, got to stop it, got to stop it, got to stop it, got to stop what? Stop them from doing what the Lord directed them to do. 
And if they look like they're going to do it, you know you can't just tell them don't do it. So what's the next line of defense? Wait. Hold on, hold on now. Don't get carried away. Don't get carried away. If he can get you to put it off, then one day becomes a week, becomes a month. And like the scripture said, you saw it clearly like looking in a mirror, but then you forget what you saw. You forget what he told you to do, and you can assume, well, yeah, I, he told me and, and I did it. No, you never did it. You never did it. Knowing it is not doing it. Hearing it is not doing it. Hearing is not doing. In our camps, word and faith, what do we excel at? Hearing. We are the hear masters. Oh, hearing and hearing and hearing. Is that right? That's how faith comes. Yeah, but that's not how faith is released. If you stop there, no miracles. Not my words. Scripture. We must excel at more than hearing. Huh? We must become proficient at more than note taking. Note making. Huh? If you want a miracle, whatever he says to you, Post about it. No. Huh? That's what you can do now. Post about it. Get a thread going. Huh? Get a lot of input back and forth. Is that how you get a miracle? No, that's how you get confused. Whatever he says to you, do it. let me see, I must have missed something here. Huh? Think about it. No. Pray about it. No. Well, you know, prayer is important. Yeah, but the Lord told you to do it. He didn't tell you to pray about it. He told you to do it. You pray about it. That's not the same as doing it. Thinking about it, it's not the same as doing it. Talking about it's not the same as doing it. Whatever he says to you, let's get it right this time. Do. Do it. Do it. Do it. When you do it, is when you make the power connection. Not before. Not before. When you do it. Remember the accounts? People healed in Jesus' ministry? The woman with the issue of blood. Hmm? How'd she get healed? She suffered many things, many physicians, nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, that's how faith comes. She came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, Brother Hagin, senior who's in heaven now, he, he taught multiple messages out of Mark 5 about the woman with the issue of blood. And uh, uh, in one particular, 
he said, the Lord Jesus, head of the church, gave it to him personally, this message, directly. It's the little mini book, Write Your Own Ticket with God. And this is something, and I'll, I'll read it to you perhaps tomorrow night. We'll take some time and, and go over it in detail. But in the little book, he said this. The Lord was telling him, gave him the steps. Number one step is uh, say it, which she said. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Yeah. Number two step is do it. Do it. And he said, if, if she had only said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And that's as far as she went. There would have been no miracle. There would have been no miracle. James talks about this. Believing without an action is dead. It is faith alone is the phrase. Faith alone. Faith is not designed to function alone. It works by love. It's expressed through word and deed. Deed. Doing. If she had just said if I touch, I'll be whole. But had then not followed up on what she said and made the effort to press through the crowd and touch his clothes, there would have been no healing. Yes. Right. Even though she believed it and said it, That's right. Amen. there would have been no healing because right. she didn't follow through to do, to do. what she said. Thank you. Brother Hagin himself his healing came the very same way. He struggled. and When he's 16 years old, he's paralyzed, just like they said he would be. But he finally got a hold, Mark 11, 24, that I got to believe I receive before I see it and feel it. Well, that's a life-changing revelation. So he, he declared in his room by himself, I believe I received my healing. He announced it before God, before the angels, before the... I believe it. And he knew they told him he had an incurable heart condition and, and paralysis and blood disease. And those were the main things. He said, I believe I received healing for that. And I believe I received healing for that. And in case he missed something from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I believe I received my healing. And yet he's not healed. There is no manifestation of power. And he believes it and he's declared it. And there is no manifestation. Yes, sir. When the Lord gave him those four things, number one, say it. Is that all there is to it? No. no. Number two, do it. The third one was receive it. And the fourth one, tell it. Tell what God did for you so others can hear it. And they, can, they can be stirred up and believe. And so after he's affirmed that and affirmed that and, and listening to the Lord doing what he tells you to do in these areas, it'll get you to where you need to be for the next part. And he said the Spirit of God spoke to him. Now you believe you're well. Hmm? Yes. He said, I sure do. Well, well, people ought to be up this time of day. What was it, like 11 o'clock or something? I don't know. Well, people ought to be up yeah. this time of day. What's it time, to, what's it time for? To Come on, help me out. To do it. He believed it. Yeah. He said it. Yes. There's no manifestation. Mm -hmm. Now you believe you're well. Yeah. Yes. Well, people ought to be up this time of day. So he said, he shoved his legs, paralyzed legs, off the side of the bed so they fell and hit the floor like clumps of firewood. No feeling, paralyzed. 
grabbed around the, the post of the bed and, and slid out and said he slid down the pole until his knees are touching the, uh, the floor. But is he doing what God told him to do? Come on, come on, y'all listening now. Is he doing what God, he said when he did that and he began to declare his healing that something began to pour on top of his head like warm honey. The power of God, he said, went all over his head and over his shoulders. And when it got to his legs where there was no feeling, they began to sting and the feeling came back alive in his legs. And he's standing there, woo, giving glory to God, healed. And he lived and walked for decades and decades and preached the gospel all over the world. After that, somebody say miracle, miracle, miracle. Miracle. But I know that in our camp, many have stopped at saying. Hmm? They've stopped at saying. And that's a mistake. You, that's not what you see happening in the ministry of Jesus. What about the great uh, 11th chapter of Hebrews? Faith chapter. What do we see? People that are in there. By faith. Huh? Abel did what? Not just made confessions. He gave. He gave offerings. Is that right? By faith, Enoch walked with God. Do we see actions on every one of these? By faith, Noah sat at the house and thought about <laughs> what God said. Huh? Talked, to, thought about it. Can there really be a flood coming? No. It took years to build that ark. Money, sweat, effort. Faith is a doer. Faith is an actor. Faith is a mover. Does God ever change? He's the same yesterday and forever. Back then he told them, quit crying to me and move. What would he say today? Has he changed? Is he a respecter of persons? Too much crying. Too much whining. Too much feeling sorry for themselves. In every situation, God already knows the answer. He already knows the way out. He already knows the way through. He already knows the power, the way it's to be released and done. And he'll expect you and I to believe what he said. And he'll expect us to put it in our mouth and say it and agree with him and, and overcome the fear. And then there'll come a moment of truth. Huh? For having done that, having heard him, having believed him, having agreed with him, having said what he said, there will also come a moment of truth where he will direct you to do something. Huh? Go here. Do this. Sow this. Obey me with this. Come on here with me. There will be an action that corresponds with what you've been saying. Right? An action. An action. These people that got healed in Jesus' ministry, the man that had the withered hand. Huh? How did he get healed? Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. Yeah, but his hand's withered. Does it sound like move? Move. 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 You don't want to tell God it doesn't work. You get nowhere with that. Yeah, but God, he already knows all of that. And when he, when he stretched it out, he didn't extend your arm. 
He said, stretch forth your hand. Well, that's the part that's withered. That's the part that doesn't work. But instead of trying to reason about that or try to convince the Lord that he couldn't do it, the reason he's in the book is because when the Lord told him to do it, whatever he tells you to do, whatever he tells you to do. And so when he reached the end of his ability to obey God, he met the power of God. He met the power of God. That's how it has always worked. Always. Every generation, every people, everywhere. He hasn't modified it or changed it for our generation. Whatever he says to you, it'll take faith. It'll take faith. Thoughts and feelings will come and tell you that you can't. You'll have to overcome it. Oh, but if you will, if you will, then you'll be those who experience miracles. While other people are still trying to figure it out, you'll experience it. The life changing power of God manifested in your life. Hallelujah. Well, you don't just have to hear somebody tell about a story about something that happened long ago. You experienced it in your life. The power of God manifested. Whew. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Glory. Stand up on your feet. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your praises. Lift your thanks. Oh, give glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> oh, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. 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 Go ahead, guys. Come on up. Let's lift our hands and give thanks to God. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We adore you. We praise your name. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Pray it out loud if you, uh, if you agree with it in your heart. Say, Father God. Father God. I, I believe your word. That there's more for us to do than hearing and saying. There are numerous actions of faith. Open my eyes, my ears and my heart to understand and I purpose to not be a hearer only but be a doer an actor a move an obeyer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. 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 Did the scripture say, if you're willing, you'll eat the good of the land? <clears throat> Huh? <laughs> yeah, but if you're really willing. No, no, that's only part of it, right? If you're willing and what? Obedient. Obedient. That's an unpopular word in our generation. But still popular with God, he still likes it. So if he likes it, we like it. We're on his side. Thank you, Lord.